Welcome back to Across the Board here with Ian the Colonel on hawkradio.org and across the board radio dot com. You know, we talk about this a lot, Colonel, that most genres of music, in our opinion, are, are dead these days, just in a law. And, uh, you know, I think R&B and, and rap are in a down period for sure. Um, I think jazz is doing well. Pop is down. I don't like pop music anyway, but it's yeah. down. Alt is actually doing well, but I think the genre that's doing the best, and I think you agree with me here, is metal. Yeah, and it should be. Metal never dies. Yeah, not not rock, but metal for sure. And uh, one of the hottest bands, you know, coming up, their, their first their debut album um, coming up right now, My Ticket Home. Really excited about these guys. Uh, we got a preview of the album. I love it so far. I've been listening to it over and over again on my iPod and at home on the computer. Uh, was that a not? I'm not advertising for Apple. I don't know. It's an iPod. Oh, my MP3 player. So, uh, but we have a uh, vocalist right now, Nick. Nick is with us on the line. Nick, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming, man. Uh, big fans, like I said, of uh, you know of what we heard from the new album, um, To Create a cur- Cure. I'm sorry. To Create a Cure. can't speak today. I need a cure for <laughs> stuttering, I guess. Um, it's going to be released on January 31st on Rise Records. Uh, and again, I love everything that I've heard so far, man. Tell us about, uh, you know, it's your, your debut, you know, full length album. What was that experience like working with Rise Records? Um, it was pretty awesome, man. We got to record with, uh, our good friend Caleb Shomo, who is the vocalist of a band called Attack Attack, that's yep. also on Rise Records. And, um, he recorded all the music that, uh, that we wrote before we got signed. And so, you know, going back into the studio with him was really nice because it's close to home, you know, with someone we're comfortable with. And, um, which was really helpful because we've never written an album before, you know, like the, uh, we had an EP out right. that was, uh, what we had when we got signed, but all those songs were written like individually, like one at a time just to be released separately. So we had never really understood what it was like to have to put together, you know, a full, you know, 10, 11 song album with, you know, you're not just writing singles, you know what I mean? You have to write all sorts of different stuff to give the album a good flow and everything like that. And um, so it was pretty nuts, man. We had a really good time with it, though. I mean, I think we're all very happy with how it came out, especially for our first one. And, uh, Nick, with touring, obviously, that's going to be the big thing behind the album, getting the word out there. That's how everybody gets the big fans, Mm -hmm. gets a following. Where can people look to see you coming up soon? I mean, there's so many great tours coming up this summer. Uh, You know, which ones are you guys going to latch on to? Um, well, actually, we uh, we actually hadn't toured at all until uh, like about six months ago. We did a right. few regional tours with like some other bands, uh, but the next tour we have coming up right now starts on uh, January 27th, and um, I'm not sure when it goes still, but I think it's like a month long tour, and uh, we're going to be doing like the full U.S. national tour with uh, a band called That's Outrageous, which is also on Rise, and a band called Casino Madrid, who uh, I can't remember who they're signed to, but it's going to be sweet, man. We've never been. Uh, to a lot of places in the United States, and, and you know, from where we've gotten to travel just a little bit in these past few months, you know, has uh, been very exciting. And so we're really excited to, to get all the way out to the West Coast and, and just to be to all these places that we haven't gotten to go yet. You know, so it's going to be uh, going to be very fun. It's called a uh, um, a New Breed Tour, which is the name of our single that we just put out on Rise. Now, you guys are from Ohio. Ohio. We have a lot. We've had a yes, lot sir. of. Uh interesting acts great acts from ohio and we said there must be something in the water because it seems like the the metal scene the hard rock scene is really taking off in the uh in the ohio area and you're going to go on tour where are you looking at playing the most what intrigues you the most uh honestly i don't really know. i'm pretty sure it's all pretty evenly spread out i know you know in all the big uh major state markets we have a few like multiple dates i know i think in california we've got like four because you know there's lots of big cities over there um I don't know, man. I'm pretty. We're just trying to get everywhere that we haven't been. You know, really hit as many of the good markets as we possibly can, uh, especially for our first national tour. I don't. I don't know if there's one place in particular that like we're most looking to to succeed in. I think we're just trying to to get out to as much place as we can, see as much of the country as we can, and uh, you know, just really be kind of all over the place. And New Breed is, is an incredible song. Um, you know, I, I, so, yeah, I love everything on there. Though '67, I mean, you know, so many, so many good tunes on there. I can't pick a favorite yet. So uh, I'm <laughs> a big fan of that. It, it, you know, it's your first album, but it is a complete album. But you know, you guys being, you know, newer to the scene, tell us a little bit about your background as well. I mean, what what got you into writing? Um, what got us into to writing and hardcore was, uh, you know, like as you were mentioning earlier, how being in you know Ohio, especially Columbus, is kind of like a hotbed for 
lots of, you know, hardcore bands and post-hardcore bands in our genre similar to us. And so um, I actually went to school with um, some of the dudes in, in one of the bigger bands on Rise that called Attack Attack. Yeah. Um, I mentioned them earlier when we recorded with Caleb. And, um, you know, we, like, grew up with those dudes. And I, like, we went to middle school with them. I met a few guys in high school. And it was pretty much like, you know, we saw what they were doing. And, you know, they were, like, the cool kids at the time. And we were like, that's awesome, you know. Like, we we had never thought about starting a band or anything like that. But a few of us had, like, taken lessons and stuff. Um, myself, I played guitar. My brother was a drummer. And uh, our old member, Sean, played bass. So the three of us just kind of started, like, covering songs. And then we ended up, like, writing a few and then that was when we got into hardcore music, and so we were just like, you know, let's let's give it a shot. And um, we just started taking things more seriously as uh, things started falling into place. And you know, I guess it just kind of, you know, took a turn on its own. Across the board with Ian the Colonel here with Nick from My Ticket Home, talking about to create a cure. The new album being released January thirty first on Rise Records. Uh, Nick, again, being that it's, it's the debut album, looking ahead at this point. What do you think you will consider success in your career? You know, what can you, when, when all is said and done, you can look back and say, this is what we accomplished that I wanted to go out and accomplish, and now I feel successful as a musician, as a human being? Um, well, I definitely, you know, I definitely think we have, you know, plenty of album cycles left, uh, you know, after this first one. This was just kind of getting our, our foot in the door, so to speak. Um, for myself, to be satisfied, really, I just, um, you know, I want to be able to, to get out there as much as possible to, to make whatever kind of a difference we can as a band and stuff like that. Um, I'd love to, to get out of the country. Uh, we've been talking with our management about trying to go to Europe, things like that. I mean, I think that would be absolutely insane. I've only ever been to, I've been in Canada once for like a day we played there, which was awesome. And nice. from everything I've heard, uh, you know, like fans of hardcore music and everything like that are just completely mental when you go out of the country and, and the shows are really sweet out there. And uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's really, honestly, just, you know, it's a really big family vibe for us. You know, we're all really close friends, and so we just want to have as much positive experience as we possibly can as a band. You know, you can only control so much of, of how how well you do and how much you succeed. So, you know, we kind of, we don't really get too hung up on that. You know, obviously, we want to do well, and, you know, we, we understand the steps you take to get there. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can't really control it, and it's kind of up to, to you know, the audience and the fans, you know, what, what bands they like. So, really, I mean... I just want to to know that, you know, we gave it our all and that uh, at the end of the day, like, we could be satisfied whenever we, you know, hang it up and go do something else with our lives. And you mentioned how fans like to go mental in other places. Uh, from what we've been told, that the, uh, the U.K. fans are absolutely top-notch when it comes to how hardcore they are with being, you know, being fans. Where in the world would you want to travel when that time comes? Where do you think you'll find your hardest fan base? Um, I don't really know too much about where I'll find, like, find, like, the hardest band and stuff like that, but personally, uh, the, the place I'd most want to travel would be Australia. Right. And that's sound because, wave. what's that? Like the Soundwave tour. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, even if it wasn't, like, a huge tour or festival or anything like that, like, obviously those would be awesome, don't get me wrong, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know if we can get lucky enough to swing that, but just, just to be in the country, I think it'd be so sweet because, uh, you know, I, I've always wanted to visit there because I, I feel like I could see myself living there at some point, like, when I decide to, you know, to move out of Ohio and everything like that, it's the only other place I've really thought could could be better in Ohio, you know. And uh, I've just always been so curious to see if it's actually what it seems like in all the videos and stuff like that. So, you know, I just I would personally, that would be, you know, quite a dream for me to, to get to go to Australia. Nick, did you just say that you think Australia would be the only place better to live than Ohio? Uh, not not to talk about any other place, man. I mean, I know I haven't traveled too much, but uh. It's funny, just, you know, people always complain about where they live, especially people in Ohio. They're always like, you know, I can't wait to get out of here and stuff like that. But uh, from all the places I've seen, man, Ohio has it going on. I mean, it's it, I live in um, a suburb called Westerville, which is like 15 minutes north of Columbus. Okay. And I think some, some like home living magazine or something like that, it was like rated like the number two best place to live in the country or something like that. And it's like, I mean, I, I fully believe that it's, it absolutely rules to live there. Um, you know, the people are good, the weather's, you know, good balance, just like, I don't know, you know, obviously I, I'm probably biased because it's home, but uh, from where I've traveled, uh, there's there's few places that, that I've um, thought were as good as, as Westerville. Well, so. 
Ohio's definitely legit, man. I'll give you that. But we 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 need to get you out of that state, brother. I mean, there's some beautiful places uh, around the, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely that, beautiful places. Yeah, I've, I've seen some stuff. Like I've been to you know the Grand Canyon and and places out mm-hmm. Florida and, and stuff like that. And I really like Nashville. Actually, um, my girlfriend lives in Nashville, and so I'm uh, actually driving back from Nashville right now. And that's a that's a really awesome time. I and mean, we got to go see the city and everything when we played there. And uh, it's it's awesome there. Uh, being from Ohio. When I bring up the name LeBron James, does a fire start to build inside of you at all? Do you pay attention to basketball <laughs> enough? Um, no, not not really for me personally. You know, sadly, I, I can't really say that I follow basketball too much. I know that like he did something that a lot of people were real pissed off about. I don't know if he like left the team or you know, yes, I don't know, screwed somebody over. But a lot of people were really upset with him for leaving or something like that. So I, I honestly don't even really know what happened. I'm. I'm pretty culturally inept when it comes to stuff like that, but uh, well, listen, you no, should... sadly, it's not going to, it doesn't mean too much to me. My ticket home should definitely take their talents to Australia. I, I, I feel that for sure. Uh, Thanks, man. That'd be awesome. We'd yeah. Love to go. Yeah. Well, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll hop on board. You do know, you we'll... follow any other professional sports though? Yeah, What's that? He's, do you, do you mean, are you big into like football? Are you a Browns fan? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, being a football fan from Ohio is tough because, you know, you got the Browns <laughs> and the Bengals and, uh, you know, they have their years and stuff like that, but um, I, I honestly, I really don't have, like, a specific team. I just like to watch, you know, good games and stuff like that. I love, you know, the sport and everything like that. I think I, I played a few years when I was younger, um, and I played, like, baseball and soccer and stuff like that. I was real big into sports before I was into, like, music or anything. So, I mean, I like to follow it. You know, if it's on, I'll watch it and everything like that. I don't, I'm not, like, a diehard for any team. You know, if there's an Ohio team playing, I'll obviously root for them. But, uh, you know, if you follow Ohio teams, we're... Uh, you know, we're average. <laughs> <laughs> average yeah. well, maybe Ohio State will start to step it up. Uh, Nick, if if you know that the world is, is you know, wrapping up in 10, 15 minutes or something like that, you know, whatever, an asteroid's coming to, to crush the earth, and you know you have about five to ten minutes left to live in your life, what is the last mm-hmm. song that you would want to hear or perform, yours or anybody else's? That I want to hear or that I want to perform? Either one or both. Okay, let's think. Um... Perform would be um, any Linkin Park song. I can't pick one off the top of my head. Um, but to hear, I'm going to go with, oh gosh, let me think. I'm going to go with probably one of my favorite childhood songs, which is Sparks by Coldplay. Huh. Yeah, I listen to Coldplay. <laughs> hey, I, I did Coldplay. I'm with you, man. Now, awesome. my, my suggestion for the Linkin Park song would be uh, an appropriate one, Waiting for the End to Come. And I know a lot of people have been kind of there's there's no middle ground on that new album. It's either you love it or you hate it. What do you think about that? Personally, I like it. You know, I mean, when you're a band that has such a distinct style that they did, you know, when they were coming up and everything. I mean, they practically invented their sound. You know, no one was really doing that. Um, you know, people aren't going to like it when they change. But you know, it's tough. I mean, especially being in a band, I understand what it's like. You know, it's kind of like a catch-22 because you can't just put out the same album over and over again. Absolutely. But then right. when you change and you try to do something that, like, you know, you like, it's so a lot of people don't accept it right away. Um, you know, there's a, few, there's a few songs that on there I didn't really care for, but I thought it was a lot better than Minutes to Midnight, or was that the one before? But I, I liked it. Yeah. You know, I, I love uh, The Catalyst. It's a really good song. Oh God, there's so, there's a lot of ones I can't remember the name of, but I, I personally like it. You know, it's like a, you know, they did like a softer, like, you know, kind of vibe to it, especially for what most people would expect to hear at a Lincoln Park. But I thought it was good. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I'm one of the few that actually really enjoyed that album. I have to disagree, but that's that's my own personal opinion. Uh, Nick, again, we're talking about to create a cure. Uh, you know, what? Obviously, New Breed is the first song that's been released. What can we look mm-hmm. forward to in the next few months? Uh, what other tracks are going to be coming off of there that people can hear? Um, well, actually, a few weeks ago, we got to shoot a music video for the song A New Breed, and um, that was really exciting. We did it with uh, a company called Thunderdown uh, Productions. They've done videos for Miss May I, Attack Attack, Memphis Mayfire, um, lots of other people. They're, they're really, really legit. Miss May I, friends uh, of the show. So, yeah, yeah, we got to shoot with them, and um, they were incredibly excited with how well things were turning out. Um, and, you know, we were super excited, too, because it was our first video, you know, and it's like for especially bands in our genre, having a video is a pretty big deal because it's, you know, you're branding your image and what people, you know, the context people think of your music in. So, you know, we took it very seriously, you know, and, you know, we were really excited to, to have it done. And actually, I was um, 
emailing the, the guy from it, we're going to get like a, a rough cut of it, I think, this week. So we're going to get to see it. So that's really exciting. And so actually, hopefully we'll have... Nick, I was going to that out whenever it's appropriate. Nick, I was going to ask you about that. Um, you know, as you get into making videos, and that's great to know you you've already uh, got one under your belt. How much do you want to be involved in the creative process? You know, do you want to suggest to the because you talked about that's branding your band? Do you want to talk to the director and say, "Hey, can we try this idea?" Or do you, are you kind of like, you know, we trust your judgment for now? Mm, um, well, actually, we had uh, originally we were going to do a video for a different song because originally a new breed wasn't even supposed to be the the single, but that was the one that uh, that was our number two choice, and that was the one Rise really wanted to do, and um, the the company Thunderdown, the guys who shot the video, really liked that song. And so they were really excited about doing the video. And we had a lot of ideas personally because we have, like, this generalish concept we're trying to use for marketing of the album and everything like that. So we wanted to, you know, have more of, like, a scripting, like, a theme to it more than, than just a performance video, you know, have, like, some theatrical aspect to, to make it more, you know, artistic and, and interesting. But, uh, you know, it just wasn't in the budget for what we wanted to do. Um, but you know, it's, 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 uh, you have to balance it, you know, cause you have to respect the, uh, the creative, you know, control that, that the guys shooting it have, you know, you have to understand that they've done a lot of videos and they know what's going to look best. And so, sure. you know, you respectfully suggest things and if they're like, no, nah, that won't look good, then, you know, you just kind of, you know, you fold and you're like, all right, they probably know better than me. And then, you know, hopefully we'll get an awesome video out of it. So you just, you know, you try to be respectful, but we like to be as, as hands-on as much as we can, you know, because we... We're, we're a band that has a lot of ideas. You know, some people show up and they're like, you know, what do you want us to do? And we're like, okay, we could try this and this. And, you know, we had, we had a lot of stuff cooking. But um, I think what we, what we ended up going with is going to be really sweet. And like I said, uh, New Breed, awesome songs, first one out. Uh, another one that the first few times through really, really catches my ear is Who is 67? Is that going to be mm -hmm. a single as well, or do you not know at this point? Um, well, it's, uh, originally that, originally that was, like, that's the song we've always kind of thought of as, like, the anchor point of mm -hmm. the album, you know, like, the, the right in the middle ground, like, just kind of, like, the, the real center of the sound of the album, because, you know, we, we kind of tend to be a little all over the place with our, with our song stylings, or at okay. least that's what I've been told. Uh -huh. Um, but I think the song, my, this is my personal favorite song, the song I'd really like to do as a single is the, the last one on the album, and the song's called Fear Complex. Yep. I don't know if you've gotten to that one yet. Yep, absolutely. But uh, that is, that's my personal favorite song, and I, I really want to get that one out there because I feel like um, it's just, it's got a curve to it that a lot of people, you know, you know, it'll catch people's ear and, and get people talking, and, and, you know, I just kind of want to stir the pot a little bit with, with what we release next. That was the one I wanted to put out first, but, uh, you know, they, they wanted to do it. So hopefully we'll get to do that second, and um, that would be the song I would like to get out. But, you know, 67 is a great song, too. I mean, I'm glad you dig it. Yeah, the whole album, like I said, there's, there's nothing I don't like on it, which is an uh, incredible feat these days. There are very few albums that, that can true. accomplish that, I'll tell you. So, uh, Thanks, again, man. Thank you. Yeah, Nick, well, we appreciate it, man. Uh, to Create a Cure is a new album. Again, January 31st, Rise Records. Check it out. Hopefully these guys get some, uh, you know, on some major tours. You know, you said you were already working on some, maybe maybe Warp Tour, maybe Mayhem, something like that. That would be cool to see. You know, we always right. cover those, very so that'd awesome. be cool to see you on one of those as well. And Soundwave, we'll, we'll talk to some people. We'll see what we can do for you, man. So, uh, Thanks, man. But again, uh, everything else. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, like I said, go out and get the album right now, and we will be back in a few minutes here with Ian the Colonel on Across the Board Radio on AcrossTheBoardRadio.com and HawkRadio.org.